Manufactured nanomaterials, health, safety and the environment. Nanotechnology is an emerging field that operates in dimensions a million times smaller than a millimetre. In this amazing nano world, atoms and molecules can be turned into tiny building blocks called manufactured nanomaterials. The unique properties of nanomaterials have a whole range of applications in manufacturing, commerce, agriculture and medicine. Carbon nanotubes are an example of nanomaterials with applications in lightweight constructions of great strength, such as bicycle frames and tennis rackets. Nanometals and nanometal oxides such as nanosilver are used in antibacterial coatings of products such as band-aids, cooking utensils and fridges. Nanozinc and titanium oxide are used in sunscreens and other cosmetics. Other sorts of nanomaterials are also found in transistors, solar cells and other electrical applications. Concerns have been raised by consumer groups, unions and environmental groups as to whether exposure to manufactured nanomaterials might have adverse effects on humans and the environment. With chemical toxicity, the harmful effect usually depends on the dose of the chemical absorbed and the amount of ongoing exposure you receive. For nanomaterials, while we can measure the dose and estimate the toxicity as we would for other chemicals, we still need a better understanding of how exposure may pose health risks because of the unique properties of nanomaterials. So far, most of what we know in this area has come from studies of airborne ultrafine particles in the environment that are emitted from vehicle exhausts, office equipment and industry. These ultrafine particles deposit in the lungs, can penetrate tissues and even become absorbed into the bloodstream or brain. As a result, there are fears that airborne carbon nanomaterials of a certain shape may pose a threat to our health in a similar way. Protecting ourselves from the sun and avoiding the risks of skin cancer is a vital part of remaining healthy in Australia. But recently, sunscreens containing nanomaterials have raised community concerns over the potential dangers of using them. Despite this debate, there is no question that sunburn is far more dangerous to your health than applying sunscreen. Nanosilver is used for antibacterial properties in several consumer products, including clothing and white goods. But when these nanomaterials are released into the environment, what impact do they have on good bacteria? Recent laboratory studies have shown that concentrations of silver nanomaterials in soil and water may adversely affect the natural microbial balance in these systems. However, there is no firm evidence on what the implications may be in real environmental conditions. Many of the fears expressed about nanomaterials arise from a lack of understanding about how the unique properties of nanomaterials will interact with the environment in general. The good news is that the international scientific community, together with regulatory and government agencies, are supporting and coordinating research on the effect of these materials to learn more. The combined effort of these organisations to understand the health, safety and environmental implications of nanomaterials means we are likely to recognise the potential risks these products may present. And it is possible that in many instances, nanomaterials will represent no more risk than any other class of new materials have done in the past. The emergence of nanotechnology represents both opportunities and challenges for our society. So it is important that we all understand the issues surrounding the use of nanomaterials. By being well informed, continuing research and appreciating the risks and benefits of this technology, we can keep ourselves safe from possible unintended consequences and benefit from the social, environmental and economic advantages of nanotechnology well into the future.